Welcome back. And in this module, we're going to be talking about the respiratory system. So let's get into it. So the respiratory system, its function is to provide oxygen to the body cells for use in creating energy. This is accomplished through gas exchange to the cells, delivering oxygen and removing carbon dioxide as waste. It can be divided into the upper and lower respiratory systems. We can see over here, the upper respiratory tract is the navel, nasal cavity, the pharynx and the larynx, and the lower respiratory tract includes the trachea, primary bronchi, and the lungs. So first let's talk about the airway in the respiratory system. So the airway includes the nose, nasal cavity, mouth, pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, and bronchial network. So that is all of this. The airway is lined with cilia. So remember we talked about in the cell discussion about cilia, which are those finger-like things that can make things move past a cell or move a cell. Well, you can also have cilia in different parts of the body. So the airway has cilia that trap microbes and debris and sweep them back towards the mouth. The goblet cells make and secrete mus mucus that protects the lining of the respiratory tract. So it's also important to know in the airway that what all these different things are. So the pharynx is going to be the throat. It's around the back of the throat. The larynx is going to be the voice box. And then your trachea is the windpipe. When we get into the lungs, into the bronchii and bronchial network, you can see at the end of the bronchioles, we have these alveoli. So that is important too, to know. They almost look like grapes. That is the way people like to think of them sometimes. So in the lungs, the lungs are structures that house the bronchii, bronchial network, and which extend into the lungs and terminate in millions of alveoli air sacs. So those again are those little grape looking things. The walls of the alveoli are only one cell thick, allowing for the exchange of gases with the blood capillaries that surround them. So these little grape looking air sacs have capillaries that surround them and that is where the air um, and the oxygen attaches to the blood cells to then transport around the body. The right lung has three lobes. So we can see down here we have the left lung and the right lung. The right lung is going to have three lobes, the, the superior, middle, and inferior. And the left lung only has two lobes because it needs to leave room for the heart. So remember that on the left side of your body, you have your heart. So you have the superior and inferior lobes on the left side. And the lungs are surrounded by a pleural membrane that reduces friction between surfaces when breathing and the lungs are attached to the wall of the thorax by parietal pleural membrane. So then we also have our respiratory muscles and these include the diaphragm and intercostal muscles. So we can see we have the diaphragm here and we have the intercostal muscles uh, here. The diaphragm is a dome-shaped muscle that separates the thoracic and abdominal cavities. So we have our thoracic cavity up here and our abdominal cavity down here, and the diaphragm is separating them. And the intercostal muscles are located between the ribs. So, you know, you can see them in here. It's also good to know that when you, move myself over, when you inhale, your diaphragm contracts. So when you breathe in, your diaphragm is contracting so that it can allow space for that air. When you exhale and let that air out, your diaphragm relaxes and moves upwards. So functions of the respiratory system. It supplies the body with oxygen and rids the body of carbon dioxide. The exchange of gases occurs the, at the alveoli which are surrounded by blood capillaries. 
It filters air as it passes through the nasal cavity. It creates speech in that larynx voice box. As air passes through the throat, it moves through the larynx, which vibrates and produces sound before it enters the trachea or windpipe. It can have, causes cough production. It creates a sense of smell with chemoreceptors that are located in the nasal cavity, and it can help us to respond to airborne chemicals. And it maintains acid-base homeostasis. So we can have hyperventilation can increase the blood pH during acidosis, and it can cause slow breathing during alkalosis, which helps to lower the blood pH. So if our body pH is off, our body can compensate by making us hyperventilate or have slow breathing. Again, comes back to the body always wanting to maintain homeostasis. So the breathing process, during the breathing process, the diaphragm and intercostal muscles contract to expand the lungs. So we had talked about this in a previous slide. We have when we inhale, the uh, diaphragm contracts and the intercostal muscles contract to allow air to come in. And when you exhale, the diaphragm is relaxing and the intercostal muscles relax because it will increase the size of the chest cavity. As the volume of the chest cavity increases, the pressure inside the chest cavity decreases. When the diaphragm and intercostal muscles relax, the size of the chest cavity decreases, forcing air out of the lungs. The breathing process is controlled by the portion of the brainstem called the medulla oblongata, which when we get into the different lobes of the brain, we'll talk more about that. But the medulla oblongata monitors the level of carbon dioxide in the blood and signals the breathing rate to increase when these levels are too high. And ventilation breathing is a regular rhythmic process which moves air in and out of the lungs. So the gas exchange process, this is an automatic uh, process where air is inhaled through the nose, passes through the navel cavity, pharynx, larynx. So if you think about it, you breathe probably thousands of times a day and you don't really even think about it. So it is an automatic process. And we know that the pharynx is located at the back of the mouth and the larynx is the hollow muscular organ forming an air passage to the lungs and holds the vocal cords. From the larynx, the air enters a cartilage-lined tube called the trachea. The epiglottis is a flap that covers the trachea and prevents solid and liquid materials from entering when a person swallows. That's why when you eat, food doesn't go into your lungs and liquid. And the trachea then will divide into two bronchi that go into the lungs. Inside the lungs, the bronchi branches out into narrow, narrower tubes called bronchioles, and at the end of the bronchioles are these small air sacs called alveoli, which we went over in the first slide. As the person inhales and exhales, the alveoli inflate and deflate like clusters of tiny balloons. This is the main site of gas exchange. So if you see that on your exam, what is the main site of gas exchange? The answer is alveoli. They have large surface area, thin walls, and a chemical layer of surfactant and a moist surface. Gas exchange takes place by diffusion between the alveoli and blood and oxygen diffuses through the surfactant. Surfactant is the fluid coating the membrane of the alveoli and the surfactant reduces the pressure required to inflate the alveoli by lowering surface tension and it prevents alveoli from collapsing. Oxygen passes through the alveoli wall into surrounding blood capillaries and into red blood cells, and oxygen is carried on hemoglobin. When a person exhales, the process is reversed. Oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged at the alveoli, and carbon dioxide is released as a waste gas. The diaphragm flattens out to draw air into the lungs and expands to force it out. 
So this is, we went over a lot of this in previous slides, but this is a nice summary of the whole gas exchange process. So you should definitely memorize this process. And that is the end of the respiratory system. So definitely go back through this, make sure you understand that whole gas exchange process and understand the anatomy of the respiratory system, the location, the pharynx, the larynx, the trachea, how it divides into the two lungs, the avioli. Make sure you understand all of that. And then there will be a supplemental PDF worksheet so you guys can do that and take the quiz. And then I'll see you at the next module. See you there. Bye.